Um, hi, my name is Marwan Crady. I'm the director of the Center for Advanced Research in Global Communication at the Amer Annenberg School for Communication at the University of Pennsylvania. My guest today in CARG Books videos is uh, Professor Cynthia miller Idris, um, who's here presenting a CARG book talk um, on her co-authored book, Seeing the World, How U.S. Universities Make Knowledge in a Global Era. Cynthia, hi. Hi. So what motivated you to write this book? Well, the book is the sort of final product coming out of uh, 12 years or 10, 10 to 12 years of work housed at the Social Science Research Council with a group of scholars. Um, and we produced another edited book and several other uh, articles. And this book was the kind of culmination of everything that we had learned in that project <clears throat> about how universities organize knowledge around the rest of the world. I would say the overarching project was motivated by a concern that um, social scientists in the U.S. Academy were disengaged from contextual work overseas in contexts outside the U.S. And that had already been documented and the Social Science Research Council was concerned about it and uh, got some funding from the Ford Foundation and then from the U.S. Department of Education to focus on Middle East studies in particular. And so I joined that project and then spent about a decade with them um, in subsequent also additional grants from the OE and from Mellon, really trying to understand what the root causes were behind that. And so this book is our attempt to not just look at Middle East studies as a case, but sort of broaden that out to thinking more generally how U.S. universities produce knowledge at this moment of a kind of global era. And what is the central claim, or do you have a principal thesis mm -hmm. uh, that the book makes? I would say there are really two major arguments. One um, is a, a sort of an, an epistemological argument about higher education itself and how we understand higher education, and that is uh, a, a call to focus not only on the disciplines as the source of knowledge production or on the departments as the units through which we understand knowledge production to be produced, um, but also on what we call not departments. And so centers and fora and institutes and thinking about all of these more flexible units, um, even symposia or, or uh, things that are more flexible and often donor driven, but sometimes university organized where a lot of the knowledge takes place, but where we have lacked kind of theoretical insights about how knowledge works within them. So on the one hand, there's that theoretical claim. On the other hand, our empirical work argues that um, the failure of the nomothetic social sciences to engage seriously in regionally based inquiry is not a failure of the Title VI structures coming out of the Department of Education itself, but rather due to the culture of the disciplines themselves, which privilege abstract knowledge over contextual knowledge. And so they were always set up to fail, if you will. It was never going to work as long as those disciplines continue to privilege uh, an abstract kind of knowledge. Okay, and what would you say are the main contributions of the book um, to the study of, you know, we are the center of global communication, but in general to the study of global communication culture, mm -hmm. interdisciplinary areas of, yeah. of knowledge production? I would say, I hope the contribution of the book <clears throat> is to ask challenging questions about who gets counted as an expert and where expertise comes from. So, um, you know, one of the quotes I, I talked about in the, in the talk today and that we talk about in the book is, uh, comes from a scholar, a, a director of Middle East Studies who says, um, you know, you can't make a career being a Syria specialist or an expert on Syria. And so one of the questions I hope people are asking is, well, then who does? Who does become the expert on Syria? And, and if it's not social scientists at the best institutions in this country who are doing it, where is that expertise coming from? And what does that mean for public intellectualism, for public knowledge, for public policy, um, for the media, for the, for the general public's understanding of regions of the world if social scientists aren't doing it? Yes, indeed. Um, last question. Um, what is next for you? What's your next project or project? That's a great question. Uh, I'm actually about to step into a new role as the director of research for a new center of higher education mm -hmm. that will be at American University. Uh, and right now, it looks like we'll have several areas of expertise, but one of them will be on comparative international education, uh, comparative international models of higher education, looking at different themes in higher education and knowledge production outside of the US. Uh, so I hope to continue to focus on the Middle East as one of the regions um, there. Uh, but I'm also quite interested in what's happening to knowledge in the U.S. in terms of political polarization and contestation. And so I'm hoping to launch a project on 
um, higher education in a moment of polarization and um, understanding the pressures that scholars are under to, um, to respond to attacks from the outside. Yeah. Well, we look forward to bringing you back uh, for another book talk. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, this was Professor uh, Cynthia miller Idris, co-author of Seeing the World, How U.S. Universities Make Knowledge in the Global Era. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.